of sharing your word. As I stand before you tonight and before this congregation, I acknowledge to each and every one, I acknowledge to you, Father, and to the people, that in myself I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Therefore, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time, may the Holy Spirit go before me. Prepare every one of our hearts to receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. Father, may we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, and may we respond in willing obedience. I ask it in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Three hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty-five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God. Think of it. Three hundred and sixty-five years, he walked with God. Every day. He walked with God. He talked with God. He shared with God. God ministered to him. God spoke to him. What a privilege. What a privilege. But let me remind you, it is a privilege that is available to every one of us. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. His desire is to have fellowship with us. His desire. Let's take a look at Micah chapter 6. I want to read verses 6 through 8. Micah chapter 6. Wherewithal shall I come before the Lord? Micah is asking a question. Wherewithal shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of river of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? Listen to what he's asking. What does the Lord require? Will the Lord be pleased with all of these things that I've mentioned? I give my firstborn to my for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He hath showed you, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I want to hold that there for a moment, and I want you to hear what God is saying. He's speaking to every true believer. Micah has a hunger in his heart. He's desiring to walk, get closer to the Lord. And so he asks, with what shall I come before the Lord? Okay. The latter portion now, verse 8. And to love mercy. Here's what God wants from us. To do justly, to love mercy, mercy and to walk humbly. Notice that last line to walk humbly with thy God. God wants us to walk with him. There's a song that says, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. I want to remind you tonight, that is what God wants to do in every one of our hearts, every one of us. He, he treats every one of us equally. He loves every one of us equally. He wants, we were created to have fellowship with him, to praise him and worship him, to walk humbly with thy God. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, we'll begin reading at verse 14 through verse 19. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, 
and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Let me just pause there. I want to share that with you again. Redeeming the time. Take advantage of the time the Lord has given us. Take advantage to serve him, to share others with him. Take advantage of having the opportunity to fellowship with him every day. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 18. Redeeming the time, for the days are evil. We're going. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's what the Lord is requiring of us. He wants that fellowship with us. He longs for fellowship with us. So I ask you to think it. Some would ask me, Pastor, what does it mean? What does it mean to walk with God? What does it mean? Walking with God, hear me, walking with God is more than just having an experience with God, more than just naming the name of God. It's, all, it's more than that. See? To walk with God involves your faith. It involves faith. It takes faith to believe God. It takes faith to have that strong relationship with him. So many times individuals have the uh, problem of looking down at themselves. I did this or I did that. How could God love me? When we start thinking like that, then we don't pray. We don't read our Bibles. To walk with God is to walk in faith. What does that mean? It means that I believe in God. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he gave his life for me, that he wants to fellowship with me. He doesn't even remember what I did. He's forgotten it. It'll never come up with him. He just wants to walk with us, to talk with us, to fellowship with us. So it involves our faith, our communion, and worship, and your willing obedience. We have to have that if we're really going to walk with God. If we're going to experience that fellowship. I ask you, how many times have you read in your Bibles, in the Old Testament, of those that walked with God? They walked with Him. They asked Him questions. They asked Him, what should I do in this case? How do I handle this? And He answered them. He told them. You read how many times when David was getting ready to go to war with the Philistines, he would ask God, should I go up against them? If I go up against them, will you give them to us? God would answer him. God would tell him what to do, how to do it. He wants to do the same thing for us. There are many times, I know in my life, there are many times when I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this situation, but I can honestly tell you, he's never failed me yet. Never failed me. I get down before him, I pray, I seek his face, I ask him to tell me what to do, and he hears me, he'll answer me. My wife would tell you tonight how many times She's heard me asking God to show me something or do something for us. He's never failed us. Okay. I tell him, Lord, I just need the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding for today to do what I need to do today, and I need you to show me and guide me. Several, several months ago, probably a couple of years ago by now, 
I was praying similar to that. There was a situation that was, we were facing, and I didn't have the answer. And so I began to, to call upon him right there in my prayer closet. I began to call upon me, on him. He pressed me to go to Psalm 32. And so I start reading. And verse 8 just seems to lift right off the page. He instilled it into my heart. He said to me, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. He hears us, folks. He wants to do that for every one of us. So walking with God involves our faith, our communion, our worship, and your willing obedience. We need to worship him for who he is. To worship him for who he is. In short, it involves your total submission to God. Totally surrendering to him. Don't hold anything back. Just come to him and, Lord, everything I have is yours. Mean it in your heart. Because the truth of the matter is, it belongs to him. It belongs to him. I've talked to you about it before, but as human beings, we have the habit of saying, this is mine, or that is mine, or this is my house, this is my car. Paul asks us a question when we have that attitude. What hast thou, O man, that wasn't given to you? And if it wasn't given to you, how did you get it? God. It belongs to God. And at any moment, he can call it back. He wants that fellowship with us. He wants us to walk with him. He wants to bless us. That walk with God then means to live one's life in the consciousness of God's presence. Of God's presence. The last few days, my wife has said more than, more than once, his presence is with us. He's helping us. She knows where the strength is coming from. She feels it. Folks, God wants that relationship with us. Communion with God. Communion with God. Walking with him. Talking with him. Let's take a look at the disciples. They walked with God, with Jesus. Three and a half years, every day, they were with Jesus. They walked with him. They talked with him. If you'll read 1 John, you'll, John tells us the relationship they had. They said we, he said, we have handled him. We have touched him. We've walked with him. Think of that. Now, did you hear that? Did you understand it? They walked with him. They talked with him. They handled him. Put their arms around him, hugged him, talked with him. Three and a half years. But hear me tonight. They never had any experience with Jesus that you and I cannot have. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We cry out unto him. We pray. We call upon his name. He hears and he answers us. He speaks right into our heart. Speaks right into our heart. To me, it's an exciting thing when I'm seeking the Lord and just didn't get an answer right away. A few days will go by. My mind isn't even on what I ask him for. And all of a sudden, he just puts it in my heart. Gives me the answer. It's exciting. And he walks with me. He talks with me. He speaks right into our heart. We don't hear an audible voice, but he imprints it in our heart. And we know that it's him. We know it's coming from God. It's been many times when 
the Lord will put something in my heart. And on the spur of the moment, I put it there. I know it's from him because my mind wasn't even in that area. And yet God spoke something to me. He wants to do that to every one of us. I'm sure that there are others of you here tonight that say, yes, pastor, I've been in that place. I've been there. To walk with God then means to live one's life in the consciousness of God's presence and in constant communion with him. Notice what I said. In constant communion with him. Talking with Jesus. Thinking on Jesus. Making, singing songs to Jesus. Worshiping him. You could even make up songs and sing them to him. Ask my wife. I, many times I start trying to sing one of the choruses that we sing in church and I got part of it and I started and then I just keep on adding to it. And Ruth, Ruth tell me, that ain't what it says. But it was for me for that time. Just praising him and worshiping him. To practice, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us need to learn to practice the presence of God. He's right here with us 24-7. But we need to make ourselves aware of his presence, practicing the presence of God. Okay? To have the thought continually before us, God is beside me. I'm not walking alone. I'm not driving my car alone. God is right there beside me. And every now and then, we need to be speaking to him, out loud to him. It's just you and him in the car. So talk to him. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. Or just spend some time loving on him and letting him return it to you. Loving on him. To still be quiet for a bit and listen to him. Our fellowship is a two-way street. Us worshiping, praising him and giving him opportunity to speak back to us. Okay. We don't need to do all the talking. We need to stop and let do some listening with him. Again, we read that Enoch walked with God. Not on a few rare occasions of spiritual exaltation, such as many of us have known. Not on just that. But for 300 consecutive years, every day after the birth of Methuselah, he walked with the Lord, talked with him. He would share with others about God. He had a love for God. It is possible for us to have this consciousness of the nearness and the fellowship of God in our daily life. Enoch had it. Elijah had it. Think of it. One morning, Enoch gets up. He goes out for a walk. And while he's walking, he's talking to the Lord, sharing with him, loving on him. And all of a sudden, the Lord just picks him up and takes him home. He was not, for God took him. He was enjoying the fellowship so much. He said, I'll just take him up here with me. He took him home. Think about it. We can have that kind of walk. Elijah experienced it. He was God's prophet. Told others about God. He would tell them what God tell, told him to say. He wasn't afraid of kings or anyone. When God told him to say something, he said it. He went to them and he said it. Told them whatever God told him to say. Then when God told him to anoint Elijah, Elisha to be prophet in his stead. He's walking by and Elisha is plowing the field with 12 yoke of oxen. He had to be very rich. The family had to be very rich to have 12 yoke of oxen. And he's plowing the field with them. Elijah walks by, he looks over and sees him. He walks over to him, just swats him with his mantle, 
and turns and walks away. He didn't say a word to him. He just hit him with a mantle. I believe with all of my heart that while Elisha was plowing the field, I believe he was talking to God. Just talking to God. He may even have been worshiping, singing, and praising him. And God chose that moment to call him to be a prophet. He ran after Elijah and he said, permit me to go home and kiss my father goodbye. Elijah said to him, go, what have I done to you? I haven't done anything. He went back home, killed one of the oxen, took the tools, the yoke and all, and built a fire and made a sacrifice to the Lord. Said goodbye to mom and dad and followed Elijah. Served with Elijah, learning, learning. One day, God says, Elijah, it's time. He said to Elisha, Elijah, I, the Lord's told me to go to such, such a place. Three or four different times he kept going. Every time Elisha would say, I will not leave you. As the Lord, I will not leave you. When they come to the Jordan, Elijah stopped and he looks at Elijah. He said, ask what you would that I would do for you before I'm taken up. Whoa, wait, 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 wait a minute. How did Elijah know he was going to get taken up? How did the rest of the prophets know? As they came to where the prophets were, they would all come to Elijah and say, don't you know that your master's going to be taken away from you today? Elisha said, I know. Don't talk about it. Be quiet. Yeah, right. Be quiet. Don't talk about it. Okay. When they come to the Jordan, he asked Elisha. And Elisha, he could have asked for anything, but his heart was in tune with God. And he said to Elijah, I would ask for a double portion of the spirit that you have. Elijah said, you have asked for a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I go up, it'll be given to you. What does that tell me? Keep looking up. Keep looking up. No matter what's going on, keep your eyes on. You see, my Bible tells me in Romans 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep looking up. No matter what's happening, don't lose faith. And the best way to not do that is to walk in fellowship with him every day. Walking and talking with Jesus. Remember, He's no respect of what he's done for others. If we have faith to believe for it, he will do it for us. If we trust him, have the faith to do it. So I ask you to think about it for a moment. For your love for God will become so intense, so intense, that from the depth of your innermost being, you will cry out, consume me. Oh God, consume me. What? I want more of you. I want more of you. Have you prayed that? Have you felt that in your heart? Are there times when maybe you were just reading your Bible and the Holy Spirit began to stir you and you just felt, Lord, I want more. I want to be closer with you. I want it. Walk with God. Daily walk with God. Okay? Cry out unto him, say, Lord, take away all the areas of my life that are not pleasing to you. As the psalmist David, you will cry, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after you, O Lord. David knew what it was. He had seen deer being chased. He'd seen them when they'd get to the water, their sides are heaving in and out trying to catch air. All of a sudden, they just get right into the water to cool down and to get away from what was chasing them. 
walking with Jesus. Walking. David's crying, Lord, I want that. I want that. My heart is hungry. As a deer panteth after the water. My heart is hungry for you, Lord. Do you ever at times just really get hungry for God's presence? You just want to talk with him? I've said many times, and I've said it to my wife many times. I'd love to be able to just sit down at the table. Jesus sat right across from me to where I could see him and just start talking with him, asking him all the questions, and I'd love to hear the sound of his voice. I thank God that he speaks into my heart, but I'd love to hear the sound of his voice. Lord, speak to me. Okay. It is possible for us to have that consciousness, the nearness, fellowship of God in our daily life. John said, John said this, for our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. When you have this kind of a walk with God, his word becomes alive within us. Can, becomes alive. The fire of God that burns in the hearts of the prophets will begin to burn in our hearts as we walk with him, talk with him. As the Holy Spirit of God illuminates the word of God in your heart and mind, okay, your love for God will become so intense that from the depth of your innermost being, you will cry out, consume me, O oh God, consume me. I want more of you. I want more of your fellowship. The psalmist, as the psalmist, David, you will cry, as I said, as the heart panted up the water. Have you come to that place in your walk with him? Have you come in the place where you just, I've got to have more, Lord, I've got to have more. I need to know and understand you better. Are you really communing with God on a daily basis? Folks, hear me carefully. Hit and miss, hit and miss will not bring you that satisfaction that God wants to have with you. It has to be continually, okay, continually in fellowship with Him. As you begin to commune with God, then you will recognize Him as the altogether lovely one. The altogether lovely one. Think about it. You will want to truly worship him. You will want to truly worship him. We have found in our times of brokenness and hurt, we start praising and worshiping the Lord. He just, as we praise and worship, he lifts us up. He lifts up, gives us newness of strength and energy to go through what's going, what is going on. We just want to truly praise and worship him. I ask you to study the Psalms. You will find that when David began to commune with God, songs of praise and worship begin to pour out of his soul. Read the Psalms. Most of them, most of the Psalms are songs that David made up to sing to God. He made them up, sang them to God, gave them to the choir director in the temple. He put them to music, but all because David was just walking and talking with God, worshiping with him. Songs begin to come and he began to sing them out loud. When you enter into the sphere of worship, then will you be able to understand what Jesus was saying to the woman at the well. John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 24. He said to her, she was questioning him about the place to worship. And he said to her, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? You need to believe what you're singing. In spirit and in truth. Believe what we're saying to him. God is a spirit. 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. To walk with God can open the door to fantastic things in our relationship with him. We miss out on a lot that God has for us because we're not taking advantage of what he's offered, the ability to walk and have fellowship with him. It has in every instance that you find in the scriptures. Look at Enoch. Okay. Walked with God. Enoch never dreamed. That morning when he started out with his walk with God, he never dreamed that he was going to heaven in that fashion. But what happened? He's having such good fellowship. The Lord is enjoying the fellowship too. So he said, I'm going to take him home. Bring him up here where I am. Think about it. He lived and begat sons and daughters, died, etc., like the, re the rest of them in that chapter. They lived, they begat sons and daughters, then they died. Not him. You know. He begat sons and daughters, but he went to heaven. He didn't die. He went to, to heaven. The book of Jude, verse 4, uh, pardon me, uh, 5, verses 14, 15, tells us that Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. He prophesied of the second coming of Jesus. Where did he get such information? Where did he get that? It's true. It's true, but where did he get it? Okay. He walked with God and communed with God, and God gave him revelation of things to come. Look at the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul walked and talked with God. The Bible says that Paul was caught up into the third heaven and all things were revealed to him. Why did that happen? Why did it happen to Paul? He walked with God. He communed with God. Paul was a prophet of prayer. He knew how to pray and commune with God. One day, God said, I'm going to take him up here and just explain everything to him. Everything. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Just to be taken up. And There's so many things we really don't understand. There's many things in the Bible that we don't understand. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he'd just take it up and say, okay, I'm going to explain this to you today and just begin to reveal it. What a time. What a time it would be. Think about it. Paul, in the presence of the Lord, from begin, God explained to him from beginning to the end, what's going to be. Have you ever wondered? Are you wondering right now today of what's going on? What's going to happen in America? What's going to happen in the world? Okay. Wouldn't you love the Lord to sit down with you and say, okay, here's what's going to be going on. Walking. Okay. Look at the Apostle John. John loved God and he walked and talked with him. He was persecuted for preaching the gospel. He was exiled to the Isle of Patmos so that he could not talk to anyone about Jesus. I figure that's the only way we're going to shut him up is get him out of here where there's nobody else around him. Okay. But the Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, that tells us, that, the, that God, uh, Jesus, appeared to him, gave him the revelation of the end times, gave him a revelation of what's going to happen in heaven. I love what he says. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard a voice behind me, a great wo voice as, a, a, as of a trumpet. And there he was, given the revelation of the end times, and the rapture of the church. Why? Because he walked with Jesus. He was faithful. He walked with Jesus. Okay. God gives us the strength to walk with him. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Okay. Let me just remind you, of, a, of a, how an eagle, eagle does. 
When an eagle leaves the nest to, to fly off, they stretch their arms like this, their wings, excuse me, their wings, and they lock in place. They can just do anything. The, arm, the wings do not bend. They take them higher and higher. That's why they don't get tired. They're not flappers. They're sailors. They go up. Okay, they go up. God gives us the ability to do that. He says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. What an experience to be able to say, I, th I soared into the third heaven, and I saw wonderful things as I communed with God today. Now, I'm going to close with this. It goes on to say to those that are walking with him, they shall run and not be with thee, weary. They shall walk and not faint. I like that. To walk with God as a heart that will not faint. I don't know about you, but by the time it, it's your time to go to bed, I'm ready. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. There's coming a day when that's not going to happen. When he takes us home, that's not going to happen. We need, we need to come to that place that we will have that walk and relationship with him. God wants every one of us to walk and talk with him, have that true fellowship with him. What is the most profitable thing you can do? He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? You read that verse of scripture, you'll see. It didn't say what the Lord would like, what the Lord wants you to do. He says what the Lord requires of you. It's not asking us to do it. It's telling us this is what he wants from us. What is good and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with thy God. Notice, walk humbly with thy God. God wants us to walk with him every day to have that fellowship with him. Father, again tonight, I just thank and praise you for the time that I've had to share your word this evening. Now I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you would quicken the truth of your word to each and every one of our hearts. May the Holy Spirit stir us to a great hunger that we would desire to walk and talk with you, to have that fellowship that you have created us to have. I ask it tonight in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.